Steve Manos um, on the last week's podcast. He asked a really good question, and I want to go ahead and answer that today. This is a technical response. So he said, I'd like to get y'all's thoughts on something discussed in this podcast. Provided the assumptions that sensor tech is being pushed further down the stack, PubSub is the way forward, and how the unified namespace is applying context up the stack. It seems to me that things like conditioning, transforming, contextualization, et cetera, at the edge is not scalable and not really a viable path forward with 4.0. So you remember JP and I were talking about data modeling specifically around profiles inside of edge of network devices, things like PLC. So add-on instructions, user-defined data types, model those types of models. And what Steve is saying, it seems to me that it's not scalable, really viable. So how do you reconcile that from a data model standpoint? Okay. In other words, how does the data instance at the sensor level keep pace with the evolving data needs in the stack so that conditioning ETL, et cetera, is no longer required at the edge. All right, great question. It's a two-part answer. So one of the things that I, I generally have to illustrate for our clients when we're working with them and when we're architecting their solutions is this. You, digital transformation really happens, there's two strategies, or there's one strategy, but there are two approaches two phases in digital transformation as it relates to just the technology. So number one, you have to have a approach that helps you integrate legacy equipment. So you have all the stuff that's in your plant. You, you want to leave no data behind, right? It doesn't mean that you're not going to leave some data behind, but the goal has to be to leave no data behind. Um, you have to have a strategy or a, uh, a, a, um, a strategy for legacy equipment, Okay, legacy PLCs that don't support IoT protocols, right? And then you and then you have a strategy for shipping equipment IoT ready. That is the stuff I'm going to buy in the future when I'm specking a piece of equipment for the OEM. The stuff that's going to come in the future is going to ship with no integration needed whatsoever. Okay. There is a third step in there, and that is adding context to data. So the, the, the new equipment, the stuff that's coming in the future, you, you give your OEMs minimum technical requirements, MTRs, and those minimum technical requirements say your equipment has to support this protocol, this because this is the protocol we have. You have to organize, you have to model the data, all the data, so no data left behind. You have to model all the data on the edge using this semantic hierarchy, generally ISA 95. Here are some examples of models that we use. Here is the model for a pump. Here is the model for a motor, right? And then your machine builder is gonna ship the equipment. They're gonna, you're gonna do a functional acceptance test and a site acceptance test just centered around functionality, right? Does it check off all the boxes in your FAT? And then at the very end, you're gonna tell them to plug they're, you're going to give them an, you know, an IP address and a username and a password, right? And then you're going to give them a group, no, a group ID, node ID, device ID for the spark plug B. And then you're going to say, point to that infrastructure, turn the switch on, and the data starts streaming. With a legacy piece of equipment, you have to do all that from scratch. So are you going to go to every single p machine and do all your modeling on the edge? Or are you going to try and put something between the machine and your infrastructure to get it modeled. The way that we generally do that is we do it really, you know, a combination of three solutions. We'll use Kep server to talk to equipment over its native protocol. Then we'll use HiByte to talk to Kepware and do all the modeling. And HiByte will stream the data in the IIoT format into the infrastructure. Another way we do it is without using high byte, we put it, it goes kept server to legacy device, ignition to kept server, all the modeling and the conversion into the IoT protocol is done in ignition. You can also do this in factory studio frameworks, but ignition is the one we do it the most with. You can also do this in Cogent's data hub. There's, there's many tools out there. I'm just mentioning the ones that we generally use all the time. High byte is best suited for 
you know, talking to your OPC infrastructure and converting into your IoT protocol. You, in, yeah, that is for streaming to your unified namespace. Okay, so the answer to Steve's question is, is that yes, it is. It is not. It's not scalable to go and manage all of your data modeling for legacy equipment at the edge. Okay, but remember why it is you're modeling to begin with. Okay, you're, what you're trying to do is take unlike data and turn it into like data so that you don't have to have an analysis algorithm for every unique type of sensor, or you don't have to have an analysis algorithm for each piece of equipment when you're trying to calculate OEE. What you're trying to do is format the unlike data for common consumption into an algorithm that can convert that data into information so that you can act on it, right? Well, we do it multiple ways so that, and, and including at the unified namespace itself, where I may bring in the completely raw, unlike data in one place in the namespace, and then reference it from the modeled location in the namespace, where I'm referencing the individual raw events, but I'm, but I'm referencing them from a, a common structure. So you think of it as a, an indirect reference, where I'm saying, um, this, this parameter here is getting its raw value from this unordered data that comes directly from the edge over here in the unified namespace. It's a reference to a location in the namespace that just has completely unordered data. Okay. We do that all the time. To answer your question, Steve, though, yes, it is, it is not scalable to manage m all modeling and transformation of data on the edge, but long term, you do want the raw structure of, of machine events to be an exact replica of, of the reality on the, on the floor in that machine. So if I add a parameter, a tag, um, um, an event in a machine, I do want that to show up in my namespace. Okay. And the other thing I want to talk about ETL, cause I get this ETL question a lot. So for those of you who don't know, uh, ETL, ETL is extract, transform, load, right? The most common example, a, a really good for the lay person, a really good example would be, imagine I have a bunch of databases in my business and if I, and I, and what I want to do is I want to create a common application, um, from all the data that's in all those completely disparate databases. And remember, when I build applications, there's really three components to an application in general. Component number one is the back end. That's the database, the underlying data store for the data that's going to be in my application. Then there's an API, and then there's a UI. The UI talks to the API to get the stuff out of that common database. ETL is, say, I want to make that common application, but I want to use data that's in a bunch of databases all across my business. An example of an ETL implementation would be extracting the data from those uncommon databases, transforming it into the structure of my underlying data model, and then loading it into that underlying data, underlying data model so that my application could consume it, the UI could consume it through the API. A really common ETL example is that the customer has all these disparate databases, you know, maybe they've got a quality database here, they got a production database there, and it's and it's not structured to any standard. So the 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 tables, the entities that are created were just they came out of somebody's head, right? And it's just like in you know, database administration, especially for those who are doing database development and architecture, it's just, it's the same concept as if you give the same functional specification to 10 different PLC programmers, you're going to get 10 completely different PLC programs that do the same thing. They do the same functions, but under the hood, the raw stuff, the way it's structured will all look different. It's the same thing in databases, right? A D, you give the same, same um, functional specification to 10 different DBAs, they're going to give you 10 completely different entity structures. Now, they may be some similarities, but they're going to be different. ETL is the concept of a good example of ETL. There, and ETL means many other things, not just related to databases. But a really common implementation is extracting data from existing 
unordered databases, transforming it into a common structure, and then loading it into a common database where your application is only going to consume the data from. Okay. And I get that question all the time. I plan on shooting a, you know, talking about ETL and mastermind and mentorship more in the future, but, um, you know, uh, I wanted to make sure I touch on it now.